Hey guys, Kat here from Standing Stone, and I have a new experience to share with you guys. In over 10 years of breeding and an additional three years of mentorship before that, we've never had to do a C-section before. All of our mamas have done everything naturally. We've been there all the way with them. And today I had to make the decision to take grit in for a C-section. How do you make that decision? That's a great question. And I consulted with two veterinarians before making that decision, as well as sharing some of the symptoms and things that she was showing us during her laboring process, ultimately helped me make that decision. And I wanna share that with you guys today. So Grit was showing us her normal signs of labor. This isn't her first litter, and that was she refused to eat, which not all mamas will refuse to eat, but if they do, it's usually a good indication that puppies are coming on the way. Uh, we also noticed a temperature drop, which is also normal with mamas. Their temperatures drop before they start having puppies, and she was doing some light panting. No active contractions, active pushing, but definitely feeling those early signs of labor. Sat with her all night rested on and off, no progression really with labor until early, early this morning when she started to do a few pushes and a few more heavy contractions started. Then we were starting to see some discharge and not the normal discharge we usually see with mamas and their first puppies being born. We usually see a very clear, light pink tinged discharge, very fluid-like, and what we were seeing with grit was some darker red discharge. Not a lot, but definitely thicker, harder, thicker and darker red. Then it moved into some greenish tinged fluid, which is usually something that I would see after my first puppy's born, not before my first puppy's born, because that is when placental separation happens, that you see that lochia, and we haven't had a puppy yet. So placentas are separating and detaching while they're still in utero, and I want those puppies out sooner rather than later. And because I was seeing this discharge and her labor really wasn't progressing, she wasn't doing a lot more active pushing, I called two vets to get their recommendation and both of them consensed that we probably need to get to the vet and have her looked at. So that's what we did, took her into the vet. They did a vaginal exam, couldn't feel any puppies in the birth canal, You know, checked heart rate, checked gums, capillary refill, all those things and the decision is made that we are going to proceed with a c-section and the reason that we decided to proceed with a c-section before administering oxytocin to start the process is that she hasn't had a puppy yet and we're already seeing the the lochia happening and i don't want more um, distress on those puppies and so we're going to move forward with the c-section they're going to do blood work get an iv started and then hopefully i'll be picking her up here a little bit later this morning i will keep you posted i will keep you updated through the process because this is all new to us folks and I want to share that knowledge and experience with you guys so if you're dealing with your first litter or you're you know 10 years into the process and never had this happen before and you need information it's here for you so we will keep you posted I will show you what things look like moving her back into her whelping area with those puppies after her c-section and how her aftercare looks so thanks for following along guys I hope you learned something I know we are going to learn something in this process and I want to share that with you Hey guys, we are back from the vet with Grit and her puppies. There were nine puppies delivered via C-section today. And you can see she's in here getting settled with her puppies, taking care of them. She's licking them, smelling them. Um, nobody has decided to nurse quite yet, and that's completely fine. We're gonna be here monitoring her and helping those puppies latch, and that mama is gonna continue caring for them like she is. This isn't her first litter, so she definitely has an idea of what she's supposed to be doing, even though she didn't birth them without the C-section. Um, we did decide to take her back into the vet for a recheck after we got back here because she was still acting a little loopier than I would have thought she would have, um, as well as um, I had checked her temperature and it seemed a little low. I checked her gums, they did seem a little bit white um, and I wanted to have her rechecked just for my peace of mind. So we left puppies in the whelping nest, temperature controlled, um, someone with them, and they were able to start supplementing and bottle feeding some of those puppies as well as recording all of their information and stats on our whelping litter diagram to keep track of those puppies' markings, weights, um, and things like that. And then 
we went back to the vet, they did a little more anesthesia reversal and um, she perked right up, temperatures coming up, capillary refill in those gums is much better. She's much more alert, more attentive to this situation um, and taking care of her puppies. And so we're back and she's doing a great job. And I'm so glad that we went to the vet the second time. If you're ever in doubt, don't um, wait, just go with your gut. And I'm glad that we decided A, to do the C-section and B, for that recheck. For my peace of mind, for her health, for the puppy's health, all that is important decision making that you have to do and advocate for your dog and your puppies. So um, I hope this information will help you make a decision in the future if you are on the edge of thinking you might need to do a C-section with your dog. We will keep you posted on how mama does. She's gonna have some recovery. She's on antibiotics and a pain reliever um, for the next couple weeks, as well as we do temperature checks with our mamas, regardless if they have a C-section or not for the next couple of weeks to make sure that we're not spiking a fever and an infection is brewing. Um, so we're gonna continue to do that, as well as um, get those sutures removed once the healing is complete. So uh, we will be watching that incision and making sure it's healing properly. So we are day five after Grit's C-section and we've been monitoring her incision daily. Um, we're gonna clean it up a little bit and she is constantly itching at and trying to pick out these staples, which is pretty common. That's why normally when a dog has a surgery or something like that, we put a cone on them or a shirt to cover this. Well, that isn't going to be conducive when she's got to take care of the nurse puppies. She needs to be able to lick them and get to them, so a cone wouldn't really work. We can't really cover up all her titties here because the puppies need to be able to nurse with a shirt or something. So um, it's just a matter of monitoring that incision, keeping it clean, pulling out some of these staples that are loose and letting go, and then restapling to keep it closed while she's healing. So I'm gonna get that cleaned up now. Just using some chlorhexidine diluted. We don't wanna get this incision super wet or anything like that, uh, but we do wanna use a form of disinfectant to clean it up, get some of those little dried crusty places cleaned up. But overall, that looks really good um, from a standpoint of no additional inflammation, not excessive redness, anything like that. So now, like I said, we've got a loose staple here. That needs to be removed. This is a staple remover. So you need to find where that staple back is. Go under it. And then that staple remover just bends that staple out and backwards and opens up the staple. I may flip flop her around so I can see and reach her belly area a little bit easier. Do a little 360 degree pivot. There we go. No, 180 degree pivot so I can see what's going on down here a little bit better. Now that I got her turned around so I can see this a little bit better, I'm gonna clean a little bit more down here in her incision area. And then gonna leave some of these staples. Um, there are a couple that are loose and kind of turning, but they are still doing what they're supposed to do, which is holding that incision closed. Then I'm gonna use my stapler and replace some of these staples in this area and down here at the bottom um, where she's been pulling them out, maybe one up here at the top too. Uh, just to keep that closed. She has internal sutures as well, but this is just to keep that outside skin closed up. So stapling, you just wanna make sure that you line things up. You don't have to push real hard. Um, you don't, just a little light pressure so the staple goes through where it needs to, like this one. Yep, that caught. A few more staples in there. This one is not holding much either. Gonna remove that one. Yeah, that's better. Good job, okay. Now we'll go check on our puppies. Now that we have an update on Grit, I wanna update you on her puppies. Uh, as we mentioned before, she had nine puppies via C-section and we did unfortunately lose three of the puppies in the first 48 hours. Uh, that is the hard part of breeding. It's never easy. It's not something that people like to talk about. Um, but it is a fact of life that that happens, that loss happens, uh, no matter how hard you work sometimes um, and all of the extra mileage you go, you still sometimes lose a puppy. Um, and in this case, we lost three, which was 
really hard to handle. Um, but what we are doing with the remaining six puppies, these six little boys here, we are watching their weight gain really closely. Um, we actually keep track of it on our litter diagrams here, their daily weight gains. I also have a chart made up to see how much loss there was, how much gain there was from the previous day. And then I have their birth weights here. So um, this puppy, Hooray, for example, he is only at 418 grams at day five, and he was born at 436 grams. So he is still down about 18 grams since he was born. He's up 34 grams from yesterday, which is good, but we still need to see that continuing upward trend um, and get him up past birth weight. Uh, Kudos is the other puppy that just finally hit above birth weight. Um, all the rest of the puppies are further above birth weight and having good gains. So this allows me to really visualize what puppies are doing well, what puppies might need a little extra help. So we are supplementing the whole litter, but Hooray and Kudos that are um, puppies that have the least amount of gains, we are actually offering supplementation every few hours just to help get them over that hump and uh, on the right track of gaining well. Grit is a rock star mom. Like I said, she's in here taking care of these puppies. Uh, they are actively nursing. They are doing a great job with that. Uh, but whether her milk supply is down from the C-section or um, these puppies are just not nursing as strongly as they need to, whatever the reason may be, we are additioning adding to that by supplementing. Um, I've got a bottle that I like to utilize for these puppies um, and we're using Espelac Milk Replacer. Um, these are the Nuck. They're an actual baby bottle with a Simply Natural nipple. Uh, some of the puppies, Kudos and Hooray, the two that aren't supplementing as well and aren't gaining as well, don't love this nipple setup. So today I may be off, um, trying my Miracle Nipple with them and seeing if we can get a better supplement feeding. So. I got little kudos in here. He's snuggled up. He's actively not nursing. So we're going to give him an opportunity here first on the bottle. And then if we can't get a good latch, we'll offer the miracle nipple. Um, it's also hard to necessarily time your supplementing perfectly because mama's in here all the time. She's taking care of them. They're nursing. And if he just nursed, he may not be very hungry. So we need to then say, okay, I'm gonna come check on you in another couple hours and offer another feeding. That's why we're offering these supplement sessions every few hours so that we can try and hit that gap of when he needs that little extra boost. Okay. Like I said, he hasn't been a fan of the baby bottle, which is fine. Some puppies do great with it. And then we're gonna actually try our miracle nipple here. It's just a syringe with a different shaped nipple on it. Um, some of the puppies prefer that shape. Get it flow started. But you can actually depress that syringe just a little bit slowly and the milk will start flowing. You don't want to go too fast um, and, you know, force the formula on your puppy because we definitely want them nursing um, and drinking that formula down. We don't want any aspiration to happen, but sometimes that little additional help from a puppy that might not have um, as strong a latch or strong of nursing tendencies will just help them be able to get a little more formula without weakening them. Here we go. He's like, yeah, still not, not having it, which is just fine. Like I said, he's got a nice firm tummy right now. He's not super thin or anything like that. This is a healthy puppy. We just want to see a little additional weight gain if we can um, so, so he can kind of catch up with the rest of his litter. Now where is my other little guy, Hooray? Come here, Hooray. This guy also wasn't nursing. Um, some of these big hosses in here are nursing on those back teats and definitely getting a little more out of it. Um, so we're gonna try, I'm gonna just go straight to the Miracle Nipple with this guy and see if we get a little bit better response since he hasn't also loved the bottle all that much. He's like, yeah, I don't know if I love this either. Kind of just spoiled for mama. Nope, he says not having it. Again, it's timing. He feels like he has a fairly solid tummy, um, so he may not be that hungry. But the last thing that I can try, just because I don't want to be forcing this on these guys, is I can go in here and, hey, Bubba, 
get one of these chunky guys that has no problems gaining pulled off and get little hooray. There you go, latched on. There you go, buddy. Good job, good job. And then this chunky monkey, come here. I'm gonna get you off. You guys are all gaining really good and get kudos latched on, there we go. So I don't know if you can see that, but I got those two puppies that I had been trying to supplement that were a little bit uh, feisty about it, refusing to supplement, but they are both latched on and going to town. Like you can see they're nursing. Kudos is nursing really good. I see a lot of action there with um, his sucking. And I'm just gonna keep these guys that are gaining really well off to the side so that these guys get an opportunity and don't get knocked off so that they can start making those gains that we want to see. So until next time, guys, I hope you enjoyed this update. Hope this gave you some information of the trials and tribulations that you may need to deal with with a C-section delivery. Um, let us know if you have questions. And until next time, I'm Cat the Dog Trainer. See you in the next video.